Now I want to begin to turn our attention to these humics in nature. How do they work and are they active? So if you look at humic acids, I, I talked a minute ago that these are chemically bound by metals. They're absorbed by clay minerals. They're coagulated by dehydration. And so what ends up happening is they're bound up like a fist. They are insoluble in water. And they have very low to no activity, biologically, geologically, and chemically. So an example of this would be that raw brown coal that we discussed at the beginning of the presentation. That raw brown coal is, from a humic acid standpoint, inactive because the humic acid molecules are bound up in insoluble state. Fulvic acids, on the other hand, in nature, do not bind with themselves as readily. They have the ability to penetrate cell walls because of their size and they interact with other molecules, ions. And so in nature, these fulvic acids are more open like a hand, open hand. They're soluble in water, and they have a moderate level of activity. So going back to that brown coal, that brown coal does have some soluble fulvic acids in it. So if you took that brown coal, placed it in water, given it enough time, you would begin to see a light, a yellow tinge to that water. That is some of the fulvic acids solubilizing into the water. But you will not see the humic acid. Now one of the, a couple of the unique characteristics about these humics is that they have both negative and, and positive char positively charged sites on them. They also have both hydrophobic or water repelling and hydrophilic or water attracting sites. So these combination of properties enable these materials to be able to do a lot of different things in the soil and with plants. And we'll begin to go into that portion of the presentation. So if these humics have low activity in nature and they're bound up, what can be done to unlock their benefits? Well, the first thing that we want to do is we want to open up the functional groups. So uh, normally this presentation has animation to it, and so I had to take that out for, um, for this uh, purpose. But what I like to do is use that hand. So if you go from left to right, what we do in our processing technology is we begin to open up those functional groups. So those fingers begin to open up from one to two to three to four to five until we have a fully active uh, material. And when I say active, I mean active biologically, geologically, and chemically. And I, I said that earlier, and I'll discuss throughout the presentation what that means, but that's a very important point. So the first thing that we do, we open up these functional groups. The next thing that we do is we uh, remove what we call the passivation components, or, or the, and, and the, the things that, that kind of keep this molecule from being as active as possible. Now you might hear someone say, uh, my humic is completely pure. We've stripped everything out. And if they say that, then it is like the picture that you see here. The functional groups have been stripped out, and it's like a hand without fingers. It's, it's not um, functionally active. What we do, however, is we take out the passivation components, but we leave in the active parts, the functional groups the parts that are important to this molecule. So you want to purify it. You want it pure, but you don't want to take everything out because then you're left with a non-active material. So 
Finally, what we do through our processing technology is we design these humics uh, to achieve specific outcomes. And the way that we do that is we have a way of selecting the proper, the proper and optimal distribution between humics and fulvics. And so um, what I've shown you here is just slices of, of the distribution of molecules. And what we do is we go and say for soil, across the widest range of soil types, we design a humic formulation that has the exact distribution between fulvic and humic that we need. If, however, we want to uh, drive nutrients into the plant, then we will select another distribution. Or if we want to remediate waste, uh, then we select a different distribution. So these are, these are specifically designed products to achieve the optimum results across the widest range of, of variables. So what we end up with is a couple of different types of technology. One is our liquid activation technology. And in this case, what we are doing is we are transforming the humic acids and fulvic acids into humates and fulvates. These are activated materials. For our dry products, our dry activation technology, which is uh, fairly new, we do a similar thing. We convert the <coughs> humic acids, fulvic acids, and human into activated humates and fulvates and human. Now you may ask, what is that human material? Well, the human material is a bulk organic mineral substance. It's really, it's, it's sort of the black particles that you see in, in different soil types. It's naturally balanced, and it's needed for uh, overall good soil structure. And so we even have the ability to activate that, to swell it, to hydrate it, and to make it active in that particular uh, material. 